Because God called out Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, yes, I'm here. Then he ran to Eli saying, I heard you call. Here I am. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And so he did. God called again, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli. I heard you call. Here I am. Again, Eli said, son, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. This all happened before Samuel knew God for himself. It was before the revelation of God had been given to him personally. God called again Samuel the third time. Yet again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Yes, I heard you call me. Here I am. That's when it dawned on Eli that God was calling the boy. So Eli directed Samuel, go back and lie down. If the voice calls again, say, speak, God. I'm your servant, ready to listen. Yes. Samuel returned to his bed. Then God came and stood before him exactly as before, calling out, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak. I'm your servant, ready to listen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this word. Lord God, that you have put into my spirit to give to your people, Lord. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, that let me decrease so that you may increase so that they only see, hear, oh God, and obey you. I thank you right now, Lord God, that this word, Lord God, Lord God, may be water for some, but it may be a seed for others. But Lord God, no matter where they are in their life and their relationship with you, Lord God, grow it within them in the name of Jesus and bring about a transformation in the life of everyone who hears and sees, Lord God, this message on today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Norman. 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 I know you can hear, but are you listening? Today's message, speak Lord, I'm lying down. So I remember when I was a child and even as a teenager, see at various moments, I would hear my mother, my aunt, or my grandmother calling my name throughout the house. Can any of you get that image for yourself? Mm -hmm. Can you hear your mama or your grandmama or your auntie? calling your name? Yes, and it seemed like they always wanted me when I was in the middle of doing something that I wanted to do. And see, the calling of my name was well, in my thought process signaled that what I wanted to do was about to come to an abrupt end so that I could do what they wanted me to do. You know, like go to the store or sweep the kitchen or wash the dishes when I would rather be doing something else, something of my choosing. So out there, I would even think that as a child living in their house, that my life was my own. I could have lost my very life playing around with fire like that, especially when I clearly knew that playing with fire that can be breathed out of the nostrils Oh God, out of the mouth of parental dragons could and would indeed bring me unwanted consequences. Come on, somebody. Now, when they called me the first time, trying my best to watch my tone, I would respond with yes, but I did not always stop what I was doing as I was responding to them. The thought was that they would continue their dialogue with me at that same volume, telling me what they wanted. And I wouldn't have to move or disengage from my desired activity. Come on, somebody. But much to my dismay, many times when I heard my name the second time, it was louder 
and sharper and follow him. Don't you hear me calling you? Believe me, there was never a third call. Simpson, I could have overplayed my hand as the child in the situation. I would immediately get up, find where that adult was, and prepare myself to get reprimanded, usually with the words, didn't you hear me when I called you? I would reply yes, only to get hit next with the threat next time. Or my grandmother's taunt would be, you better hope that I'm not calling you because there's a fire in the house. So every time she would call me, I'd sniff the air for smoke, you know, just in case. <laughs> the thing is that even though I heard them call my name, I wasn't prepared to listen. It was only until I felt a sense of urgency because I might have been in trouble did I run to them to see why they called. It wasn't until I comprehended that the calling of my name came with an intention by the one that called me that I was not only to hear the call but respond to being called. See, many individuals interchange the words hearing and listening and mistake them for the same meaning. Yeah. That's right. See, the definition of hearing revolves around the physiological act of hearing sounds. The definition of listening revolves around actively paying attention to the words and sounds that you hear to absorb their meaning. So, I can hear you, but not listen to you. Thank you, Deacon Norman, for doing that skit with me. I can hear sounds coming out of your mouth, but unless I decide to give attention to your words, then you sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. Wow, 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 wow. Listening is an active process, whereas hearing is a passive process. Listening requires paying attention, whereas hearing does not. Listening is an internal response that involves both the mind and body, whereas hearing is a physical act that only involves the ears and it stops there. So when you say, boy, did you hear me? And he says, yeah, he's not lying because your question should have been, boy, are you listening to me? Because if you ask that question, then he has to tune everything else out and pick up on your tone, your body language, and mainly your words. Simply put, listening evokes a response. So no, come follow me on this journey. No, hearing and listening are not the same things, and that is important to a believer. It's important because many times, we think we are listening to God when we are really only hearing God. See, what I mean by that is that since the Holy Spirit is inside of us, since the Holy Spirit is stirring within us and stirring up the word of God inside our hearts, our minds, and our soul, we know when God is trying to speak to us. We may act like we don't know when God is trying to speak to us, but we know. We are aware that the Holy Spirit is connecting with our human spirit to bring about an awareness of the presence of God. But see, the cares of this world, our concerns, what we have on our mind, what is going on with our kids, what's going on with our spouse, What's happening on the job and who will be the next one voting for survivor? Stop us from listening. We can't listen to God and all those other voices at the same time. Hearing too many voices simultaneously can be synonymous to mental illness. And if you can be honest, you will admit that there were times when you missed, messed, or mixed up what you thought was God, with all the other voices competing to get in your head. And 
all because you are not in the place to listen to God and only God. In the third chapter of 1 Samuel, we immediately learn that the word of God was rare. God was not speaking. He was not speaking audibly. He was not speaking prophetically. And he was not speaking through visions. Samuel had been given to Eli the priest by Hannah, his mother, when he was a very small boy, as the promise that she made to God when she asked God to open her womb so she could bear a child. Eli's biological sons were, went unchecked by Eli as ungodly, they operated as ungodly priests, we know the story. They operated as ungodly priests before God and before the people of God. So God could not and would not waste his time making his presence known to them. But see, God is known for always having a ram in the bush. And what I love about God is that he will look through a pile of trash and find something valuable. In the house of Eli, amongst all the corruption, among all the greed, and among that poor parenting that was going on, God saw Samuel. And I find it also interesting that in the word, it tells us that Samuel lived with Eli the priest, and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. You would think that if you lived with a priest, you would have exposure to the word. You would have some experience with knowing God. Well, well let me bring this to present day living. Uh -huh. You would think that children raised by believers uh -huh, would be able to discern, uh, at least some of the time, uh, between God's presence and the enemy's feel good moments, even if they learned about God by watching us, but yet they, yet they, yet they, yet they still, yet they still. So when God called Samuel, Samuel heard his name, but it wasn't until Eli told him to respond with, yes, I am your servant, ready to listen. Did God really get to speak? Some of us, like Samuel, are serving in the house of the Lord, but still can't discern what's of God and what's not. Some of us, like Samuel, are so busy in the church, consumed with the recognition, adoration, and admiration of being in a role and carrying a title that we don't sit still long enough to hear God's word, so we don't recognize God's word. Yes, yes, some of us. Some of us, like Samuel, when he heard his name called, would immediately run to a person for affirmation or before turning to God for clarification. Yes, some of us would do that. You say, well, how do I know? How do I know that God is speaking to me? If you wonder that, how do I know that God is speaking to me? How do I know it's God and not my inner self or words from other people being repeated in my mind? I'm going to tell you this, when God speaks, mm -hmm, when God speaks, your mind, body, soul, and spirit sync up and line up in harmony and peace with one another. For God calls all things to order. When God speaks, you have a peace within yourself that is unmatched any person, place, thing, or idea that you can have. When God speaks, there is a faith that rises within you that makes you feel that you can move mountains because the mountain mover is before you. When God speaks, you have a strong urge to forget and forgive others and even yourself. When God speaks, you see the impossible become possible. You can't wait to make a faith move. When God speaks, you know that you are special. When God speaks, you are not afraid of the unknown, even death. When God speaks. But that's when God speaks. But God will not speak if you keep speaking all the time. God will not speak if you want to walk. 
walk and live an ungodly lifestyle. God will not speak if you hold unforgiveness in your heart. God will not speak if you mock him and mock what's of him. God will not speak up if he's trying to speak to you again and again and again and again and you still do what you want to do. See, God will not speak if you're not ready to listen. Sometimes there exists a conflict between God's call and our willingness to answer him because there are some things in life that some of us don't want to let go of or come out of in order to move past hearing God now and then to listening to him for direction for our lives. Let's be truthful. Why? Because when I hear God, if I'm actually listening to God, then I'll have to obey God. See, Jonah heard God, but it wasn't until he was actually in the belly of the fish that he really listened to God. It's not that some situation and circumstances to get your ears open. So I heard in the word that Paul said it's better to marry than to burn. But I'm not listening to God to see if who I'm with now is the one. Because now committed myself, heart, mind, and even sometimes body, okay, to the person before I took the time to seek God. So now I want what I want, and I'm not listening to God because my carnality and my desires block my ability to listen. Even though I hear God calling my name again and again, I can't listen because I've given too much of myself too soon before I check with God. But believe me, you become a bona fide listener when the crap is the fan. It's nothing like falling like coming to God after all is the fan. God, I should have listened. I should have listened. I knew you were talking. Oh God, I should have listened. We've all been there. So to paraphrase Stephen Furtick, Furtick of the Elevation Church. There may exist conflict when called by God, but the right response allows God's availability to us. When Samuel said, speak, Lord, I'm your servant ready to listen, it provided God access to come to him and work through him. And when God got accessibility and availability, God made a move. God transitioned Samuel from an apprentice to a priest and from a priest to a prophet. Yeah. And to completely set things right, God transitioned Eli and his sons off the scene. Yes, yes. By the time we get to 1 Samuel chapter, 1 Samuel verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, God is speaking again because now someone's listening. We now go from reading in chapter 3 that the word of the Lord was rare to chapter 4, when the word says Samuel's word came to all Israel. Samuel was no longer the boy who just heard God, but was living a life of one who listened to God. See me, see my God. All right. So today I want to leave you with this. God is speaking, but have you positioned yourself to listen? After the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel went to Eli, notice that when Eli perceived that it was the Lord who was calling Samuel, Samuel, in addition to Eli telling Samuel to answer God in a specific way, Eli told Samuel, go back and lie down. See, that's the word of the Lord for you today. Lie down. If you worry, lie down. If you're frustrated, lie down. If you don't know what to do or how to do it, lie down. If you got a negative result from the doctor, lie down. If someone wants to take you to court, lie down. If you don't know what to do next in life, lie down. If you don't know if he or she is the one, lie down. If there's trouble on every hand, lie down. Eviction notice, lie down. 
Job instability. Lie. Food insecurity. Lie down. No peace, no rest, no hope, no use. Lie down. Lie down before the Lord and get perfectly still. And when you hear God call your name, answer with this. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for the teaching on this day, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you visited each person who heard the word and will hear the word in a special way, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, that you deal with their heart, mind, soul, and spirit, Lord. Lord God, and teach them, Lord God, how not to worry, but to come before you and lie down, Lord. Lord God, I thank you right now, Lord God, that people will not just be hearers of the word, but be doers also, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for this and all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Are you listening? Are you listening? Or are you just a hearer? Where it says be a doer, just a hearer. So what, what, what are you listening? We constantly go back and forth. We've, we've heard things said, but do we listen? Because if I can't see it in your actions, I just assume that you heard, but you weren't listening. I'm an observer, so I, I, I know. So we have to be very cautious, as the woman of God said, that we're not just hearing, but that we are listening. 